are going to be running a race. <laughs> However, your starting position in this race will be decided by the answers to questions that we are going to be asking you. Okay, what? <laughs> it's a joke. Get it? It's a race about racism. It's a joke like the kid said. Well, I am certain that this lady is going to give these kids a fair rendition of the world and won't try to play any manipulative games to make these kids dislike each other based on race. I mean, that would be insane. This activity is intended to explore how society favors one race over others. People often confuse white privilege with being wealthy or being rich. And it isn't about that. What it's about is the absence of having to live with the consequences of racism. What exactly does the consequences of racism mean? You didn't specify, so basically it could mean anything. Does that mean I have to feel guilty about slavery, which is something I never participated in and is also something that pretty much every single race has done to other races? How about you thank the West for leading the charge in making slavery illegal because there are many other parts of the world where it still exists. Interestingly enough, Japanese Americans were subject to racism in the 1940s. Do you remember when the US government and the media establishment fear-mongered everyone into being okay with Japanese people having their property stolen and being thrown into concentration camps? That was around 80 years more recently than slavery, yet Japanese people seem to be doing just fine. So is this really about the consequences of racism, or are you just trying to divide and conquer people? Anyway, let's hear the rules of this game. If the question applies to you, you will take a big step forward. If the answer to the question doesn't apply to you, you stay where you are. Oh wait, I forgot to check who this was made by. Let's see. It looks like it was made by Channel 4. Well, that makes sense. Remember this Channel 4 interview with Jordan Peterson where they spent the whole time strawmanning him? You cited freedom of speech in that. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. Man, imagine censoring people, firing them, or throwing them in jail because something they said made you uncomfortable. Truth tends to be uncomfortable, so I can think of nothing that is more authoritarian than that. Let's get more into it, but first, if you like the content you see on this channel, then consider making a donation. Viewer support helps keep me independent and it helps fund the channel. Links to my PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar pages can all be found in the description. And also, don't forget to support me on all tech. Links to my Odyssey, Rumble, and Minds pages can all be found in the description as well. Alright, first question. Full disclosure, I'm doing these out of order because it makes more sense to do it that way. If you've never been asked where you come from, take a step forward. Okay, I'm white and I've been asked about my racial heritage a ton of times throughout my life. How is this a disadvantage? This question about where you're from is actually a conversation starter. If you have good communication skills and come from a place that's unique, it can make for some really interesting dialogue. Interesting dialogue that will make people like you and be way more invested in your success. I'm not sure how small talk is racist because questions like this are an opportunity to show people who you are. But I guess in five years I'm going to be called prejudiced for asking how someone's day is. Question number two. If you have ever been the only person in the room of your race, take a step backwards. <laughs> Uh, if you aren't racist, why does it matter? People are judged by their merit, not by their skin color. And by the way, it's the radical left who's trying to bring back judging people by their skin color. When I was younger, nobody cared about what race you were. In fact, I, as a white person, have been in a room where I was the only white person. Many times. The second job I ever worked was for a company that cleaned hospitals. I was the only white employee at that company. Everyone else there was either black or Latino, and there was like one Filipino guy. During the two and a half years I worked that job, nobody talked about race, and we all got along great. I met some really cool people there, and we had a lot of great conversations during breaks and when we were supposed to be working. That was around 12 years ago. 
thanks to all the radical leftists promoting critical race theory, I imagine working that job in today's environment would be a much more hostile experience. We can thank things like Channel 4 for making people hate each other unnecessarily. Look, it's even having an effect on the kids, too. The divide widens, and the inequality of their position becomes clear. This is just, like, not fair now. Far Far None of us are white. None of us are white. So wow, thank you for your service, lady. You've really helped society by taking these kids who were previously okay and making them resentful based on race. Remember when they were happy at the start? We are going to be running a race. <laughs> However... The only saving grace here is that Channel 4 got roasted in the comments and they got like four times as many dislikes as they got likes. Look at that title. Heartbreaking moment when kids learn about white privilege. The only heartbreaking thing that happened here is what you did to these kids' minds with this game. Speaking of, we aren't out of questions yet. If English is your parents' first language, oh. take a step forward. Oh yeah. <gasps> How is this a disadvantage? I know this took place in the UK, but in California, if your parents speak Spanish and they teach that to you, that gives you an advantage when it comes to getting hired for a job. But I guess what they're implying is that not being a native speaker prevents you from understanding people and harms your ability to socially connect. Which is ironic because harming people's ability to socially connect is exactly what Channel 4 is doing with this assignment. Here's the thing though. When my great-grandparents immigrated to America, they didn't speak any English. My grandmother and grandfather's family came from the same town, and when my great-grandparents moved, they told their kids, my grandmother and grandfather, we're in America now, we are only going to speak English. Guess what? They learned English very well, and my great-grandparents, who are not native speakers of English, ended up being perfectly capable of speaking the language. Their son, my grandfather, grew up to be a very successful electrical engineer, my grandmother became a stay-at-home mom, and they retired very well off. Maybe it's less about what your native language is, and more about being willing to learn the primary language of the country you live in. This philosophy that Channel 4 and leftists promote is absolutely cancerous to the people they are claiming to help, and is probably largely perpetuated by people who have never seriously studied a second language before. The worst thing for a non-native speaker of English is to have things like all the signs written in three different languages so that they aren't forced to learn the language. If you know anything about language acquisition, then you know that if you really want to learn, you need to put yourself in an environment where you have no other options but to learn the language. Otherwise, you'll revert back to your native language at every opportunity, and you'll learn nothing. If anything is preventing people who don't speak English natively from succeeding, it's the radical leftist ideology that keeps giving these people cop-outs so that they don't have to learn the language, which forces these people into ghettos where they can only interact with people who speak their language, instead of having access to the rest of the country. Tell me, are you going to have more job opportunities if you can only speak to the small number of people who speak your language? Or are you going to have more job options if you speak a language that will allow you to communicate with the entire country? As I've said many times before, the radical leftists who promote this stuff are not your friends. Sorry this is kind of a big rant, but this bugs the crap out of me, particularly in a time where it's cheaper and easier than ever to learn a new language. Everything is free. You can learn English for free on YouTube and practice by walking outside. That's not just English, by the way. You can find language resources these days for most languages either for free or at a very low cost. And before I get called a racist, know that I've been learning Japanese for a number of years and I am very close to conversational fluency, so I know exactly how much work it takes to learn a second language. It's just so stupid because I'm trying to teach people lessons that will pull them out of poverty, yet in response, the radical left calls me racist, which keeps those people down, and somehow the people on the radical left are the good guys. Okay, rant over. Last question. If you have never had to be worried about your family being stopped and searched, take a step forward. I don't get worried about if people ask me to stop and search. Who isn't nervous around the police? The police have been trained by the government to do tons of illegal stuff and trick you into giving up your rights. The Zoomers won't know this, but back in 2012, 2013, 2014, there was a very legitimate movement for police reform. This movement not only pointed out all the illegal and immoral stuff that cops do, but it was also teaching people how to interact with cops so that cops can't step all over your rights and so that you remain safe during a police encounter. 
You don't like getting stopped and searched? Did you know that in America, that's illegal if you don't give them consent? Police can't stop and search you without probable cause or a warrant, but they can certainly trick you into a legal gray area by saying things like, stop right there. They may not have the legal authority to stop you, but if you comply or don't refuse to stop, then it doesn't matter. They can also say, can I search you? Or, I'm going to search you now. If you comply after one of those is said, then you have given up your Fourth Amendment protection against searches. You can stop them from doing this or get them into a lot of legal trouble by saying, am I being detained or am I free to go? Or by saying, I don't consent to searches. I'm not a lawyer, so take this advice with a grain of salt, but back during that time period, there were many lawyers telling people to be polite, keep your mouth shut, and assert your rights when talking to police. If anything goes wrong with the police encounter, you handle it in court. This information helps ensure that police stick to their job, which is stopping criminals, not pestering people who have done nothing wrong. Do you know what stopped police reform and stopped people from getting educated about their rights? Black Lives Matter did. They completely subverted the police reform movement, made it all about race, and divided and conquered everyone so that nothing got done. Then, in 2020, proceeded to cause tons of damage to minority neighborhoods that they claimed to be helping. As I said, these people are not your friends. Anyway, let's see what the kids think of this little assignment. If we were about to start a race, is this a fair starting no. point for us all? No. no! I want you to pay close attention here because I just talked about techniques to convince people on my last video. Can you see how effective this exercise was at convincing the kids that everything is unfair? Playing games and doing thought experiments is one of the most effective ways to get people to listen to you. Albeit, in this case, it was incredibly deceptive because Channel 4 is essentially lying to these kids about how the world works because in the West, we live in one of the most racially tolerant times ever. But whether Channel 4 told a lie or not, the technique was still effective. Mackay, how do you feel standing there in the field of runners? I kind of feel a bit alone. A bit alone. As I, I, I can't really see. I'm literally just by myself, more or less. I'm just a bit, a bit frustrated and annoyed that society nowadays really isn't fair. And I just wish everybody could be equal. I'm literally just by myself. He said it, not me. Yes, Mackay, that's the point of the assignment to divide everyone based on traits that can be easily identified like sex and skin color so that you immediately know to hate someone the second you look at them before you even speak. This is how dividing conquer strategies work, and it's why race is one of the primary ways people are divided. People can easily tell what racial category you fall into just by looking at you. It's kind of frustrating that like me and Sarah are just standing at the back here while the majority of people who may be white are like standing right at the front. That just frustrates me a bit. Because it's almost as in what society is today. I, w I don't want this to be how it is, but it is. So it just gets a bit frustrating. You're like 11. How do you know it's like that? You haven't seen the world yet. And most importantly, just minutes before this assignment, you are getting along fine with all your friends who are all different races. So where's your experience with this reality? But because of how the adults in this video frame this activity, she now says... That white kid is ahead of me in the race, and that's unfair. Can you see how that might cause this little girl to hate white people when she grows up? Your brain has a way of filtering things based on your prior experiences. So if some adult tells you when you're 11 that white people have an unfair advantage, then as you grow up, you're only going to notice places where white people have the upper hand. This kind of tunnel vision will make you very resentful. Now let me address the elephant in the room here. This is not even a fair assignment because Channel 4 chose the questions, so everything is biased to make white people look like they have the advantage. How about one of the questions being, step forward if you've ever been given a scholarship, a job opportunity, or been admitted into an educational program because of your race? How about, step forward if you're allowed to say things people of other races are not allowed to say? Or last, step forward if your race has an entire month dedicated to it. I can put the white kids at the back of the line just by changing the prompts which makes this assignment completely guided by bias. The kids weren't given a game where they can discover their own answers. They were instead given a game where unless you have a lot of life experience and can offer a contrary opinion, the only conclusion to this assignment is that white people have an unfair advantage everywhere. Henry, how are you feeling being right at the very front? Um, it feels quite weird because if you think about it, um, I think all of us should be at the same point. But 
sadly the questions um, the way that they were put didn't favor some people which I think is quite unfair so now we have a group of kids who are resentful and a young white kid who has been made responsible for the inequality and now feels guilty for something he didn't do. Perfect. That's exactly what the radical left and the establishment want, because it keeps us from uniting against the real powers who are screwing us over. The establishment has found a way to have us argue over arbitrary nonsense like race, which is something that we have no control over. People shouldn't be made to feel inferior or guilty because of the situation they were born into, but that's exactly what this Channel 4 assignment did. Ultimately, to fight this divide-and-conquer strategy, we have to work things in reverse. The strategy of the establishment is to convince us to find reasons to hate each other, which is very antisocial behavior. To counteract that, we need to find reasons to get along. That's why this practice of finding common ground in debate is so important. If debate is just about what we don't like about each other, then all it will do is make the problem worse. Which means, every single time you have an argument with someone, you need to be actively looking for places where you agree, even if you don't fully agree on the main topic. Now, it's fine to point out the negatives when things are going wrong, but if all you do is look for negativity, then you're going to find yourself destroying your personal relationships, and you'll end up very socially isolated. You need to make an effort to find positive things about people. I try to do that in every video. Believe it or not, I even did it in this one. I don't like what Channel 4 did, but I did give them points for very effectively convincing the children of their viewpoint. That tiny bit of nuance is important. It's not going to change my opinion on the moral character of Channel 4, but this practice of finding people's positive traits is important because there are a ton of people in real life who fall into a gray area who you may be dismissing because you have only looked at the characteristics they have that offend you. If that doesn't describe the current political divide, then I don't know what does. How many people have dissolved friendships or ostracized family members, completely forgetting all the good things those people have done, simply because they voted for the wrong political candidate? Don't be like that. Look for the good in people, even in those you hate. But with that said, I think that's enough for this video. So if you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, comment and share. If you would like to support this channel, then you can do so with PayPal, Patreon, or Subscribestar. You can find all of those links in the description. Last, don't forget to check me out on Odyssey, Minds, and Rumble. You can also find those links in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.